In the last video we got to know Wireshark, our sniffer as well as packet analyzer. As I've said, it's much better for you to learn how to use Wireshark through actually using the tool. So now I encourage you to do just that. First, click on the link in the description below. It will take you to an exercise. So now pause this video and try to solve the exercise and answer the questions. Then resume the video and I'll show you a guided solution of the exercise. Have fun! So the first question is, what protocol does the ping utility use? All right, so even before starting the command line, let's start sniffing. So again, I'll hit Control and K in Wireshark. I'll choose the right interface. As you can see, we have some traffic in it. And I'll hit Start. And now we'll start seeing packets. I'll go to the command line. And I'll write ping minus n1 www.google.com. Hit Enter. Okay, we got a response too, so now we can go back to Wireshark and hit Control E to stop. So this was a very quick sniff and actually it's really easy to see here that we have an echo ping request and echo ping reply. Now, let's say in case it hadn't been like that, it hadn't been that easy, but we'd received many other packets, what would we have done? So we could go here and see Google's IP address, right? As you can see, ping tells me we're pinging www.google.com, which has this address right here. So I can actually mark the address and I can tell Wireshark I'd like to see only packets sent to or from this IP. And as we've learned in the last time, we can, let's take another packet, just this one. I'll go to the IP layer, internet protocol layer. Let's say I want to take only packets sent to this address. So I'll go using right click applies filter selected, and then I'll change the address here. So I'm actually going to see all packets sent to Google's address. I can see there is just one called echo ping request. So Wireshark even helps me and tells me this is a ping request. So the answer is the protocol is ICMP. And if we look at the layers here, we can see that we have Ethernet, then we have IPv4, and then we have ICMP, which stands for Internet Control Message Protocol. Next question. Using only Wireshark, compute the round trip time. This means how long it took since the ping request was sent until the reply was received. Okay, so from the previous question and answer, we realized that ICMP is the relevant protocol. So we can go to the display filter here and write ICMP and hit enter. Now we can see both the ping request and the ping reply. Now we can look at the time column here. And just to remind you, this is the time that passed since we sniffed the very first packet or frame in the sniff. So for the first packet, it was 7.796, let's stop here, seconds since we start sniffing and for the second one was 7.888 seconds. So for computing the RTT, the round trip time, we just need to subtract. So it's 7.888 minus 7.796 which is um, 0 0.092, which should be 92 milliseconds. So to validate that, we can actually go to the command line and see, yep, ping said the same. So ping says that it took 92 milliseconds to get the response. For question number three, we are asked to run the following command, ping minus n1 minus l342 www.google.com. And the question is, what is the main difference between the packet sent by this command and the packet sent by the previous command? Okay, so in order to see the difference between the two commands or the packets being sent, we need to have a sniff where we have both packets. So I could just run the command again, or I could have another sniff and save this one in another file. This time it's easy enough to just 
sniff and get both packets on the same sniff file. So let's hit Control K again to start a new sniff, again from this interface. Continue without saving. Okay, let's open up the command line. And I'm gonna leave the ICMP filter here because we already know that it's the only relevant thing. So I'll hit ping minus N1 www.google.com again. And now for the second command, we're supposed to add minus L342. Okay, let's look at the difference now. So I hit Control E to stop. And let's see, okay, so already from this pane here, the general packet pane, I can see that we have different length, right? We have a length of 74 bytes for the ping and request and reply for the first time we use the command. And then we have 384 bytes for the length of the second time we sent a ping. Okay, so let's look at the first request. It's from 182.168.13 to this address. Just like the second request, we can see that right here. So let's look at the ICMP header. So we can see the type is a request. It's type eight, code zero. We have some kind of checks and we don't know what that is. We don't know the identifier. Well, those numbers seem different, but there might be something bigger here. So if we look at the other request, we can easily see that it's much longer, right? So it's also type eight, code zero, and there are some numbers here, but again, the main difference seems that we have lots of data here, much more. And the data here, so Wireshark shows me that as if it were a different layer almost, right? Because inside the ICMP, we see this chunk that says data. So Wireshark tells me that the data is 342 bytes long and this number should seem familiar as we've chosen minus L342 here, which really stands for the amount of bytes that are sent as data in the ping request. So the answer is the amount of bytes sent as the data. Question number four, what is the content provided in the ping request packet? And what is the content provided in the ping response packet? Okay, so back to Wireshark, um, let's look at the data. So let's go to the first request and let's go to the data down here. And when we look at the bytes pane, okay, if we look here, it doesn't show us much interesting information. It's just the hex values. But if we look at the bytes pane, we can look at the ASCII values and we can actually see this is the ABC, right? It goes from A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all the way through U, V, W. And then it go, starts over again. So we have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all the way through W, and then A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. Okay, and it's only 32 bytes, which is the default for the pin command. And now if we look at the reply here, and as you can see, Wireshark tells me this is frame number 60, right? So this is frame number 60, as you can see here in the number column. And Wireshark tells me, notice that the reply is in frame 61. Perhaps we can learn how this is implemented in a sec. So let's see. So let's look at frame 61 and we can look at the reply and see, oh, it's just the same thing. But now it's not clear whether the ping reply includes the same data as in the ping request or it's just that string of bytes, A, B, C through W and then A, B, C, D through I. So let's look at the other ping request that we've issued. And we can see here that since we used the minus L flag, we're sending this data over and over again. So we have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all the way through W, and again, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, J, J, K, all the way through W, and then again, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and so on and so forth till the end. And when we see the reply, we can actually see that it is trimmed. So the server replied with A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all the way through W, and again, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all the way through W, and then all the way through R, and that's it. So it didn't continue. So it sent 64 bytes of data instead of 342. And notice Wireshark hasn't been able to identify that the reply matches the request. So apparently Wireshark thinks 
that since no response was found that included the same stream of bytes exactly as the one that was being sent in the request, then Wireshark assumes that no response was found. And you can see that both here and here in two different places, here in the details pane. So as you can see, Wireshark assumes that their response includes the exact same data as sent in the, in the request. The answer for the ping request is A through W over and over again. Regarding the ping response, the same as the request. In the next video, we shall have some more practice with Wireshark.